Okay. Okay, 15? Oh, oh, what? <laughs> company code clearing account. Yeah, stock and company code clearing accounts would be affected. Okay, 15? You're moving stock from one plant to another and would like to accumulate costs? What mechanism would be best? Stock transport order. Stock transport order. What other benefits does this approach provide over alternative approach available? Tracking, cost allocation and a whole bunch of other advantage. Yeah? Integration with materials management. Right. That's coming up later too. Correct. Can be monitored through PO history. Right. So there's all bunch of those points there. Okay. Uh, so it's stock transport order. And stock transport order allows you to accumulate costs, allows you to uh, track the history. It has integration with, uh, with uh, materials planning, with MRP, all of those things. And that integration with MRP is coming up again. Uh, that is the next question, really. If MRP creates a purchase requisition, what are the two different things into which this could possibly be converted to satisfy the requirement? Stock transport order and purchase order. Purchase order and stock transport order, right. See, the MRP chapter shows you that a purchase requisition can only be converted to a purchase order. Right? But stock transport order is another kind of internal purchase order. So you can actually convert that purchase requisition into a stock transport order and then get stock from a different plant. Because you need material, you can get it from the other, other plant. Okay. 16 uh, is done. 17. What mechanism is used to link inventory van to warehouse? Interim storage location. Interim storage. No, no, not interim storage. Oh, you meant inter linking in that way. Warehouse. Right. Warehouse is the uh, connection of the storage location plant combination to a warehouse number. Okay. I think your, your answer is more like on an operational basis. This was more like how do you set it up? The, it is the linking of the plant warehouse, uh, storage location combination to a warehouse number. Right. So if you let me show you the the slide. So the, it's basically how do you put a storage location into warehouse man in, into warehouse under warehouse control. Here, this one is what we are talking about. So you've got these storage locations, right? And this storage location is not under any warehouse management, right? Because it's not connected to a warehouse number. Whereas all these storage locations are under warehouse management, all the others, except the last one. So is it, I mean, under this condition, the warehouse number is not true always because some storage locations are not allocated, then there is no linkage between warehouse management and inventory management. Right, right. So the more appropriate answer wouldn't be like an infinite storage area when it's like every time possible, like they both are connected. No, no, no. The, the question, let me see how I worded it. Uh, uh, what mechanism is used to link inventory management to warehouse management? Uh, okay. Yeah, I should probably have said what mechanism is used to put a storage location under inventory management. Yeah, then it's a warehouse That's what, yeah. yeah. The linking, I think you are looking at it from an operational sense. Material comes in, how is it connected to the warehouse? And okay. book everywhere talks about like if warehouse and inventory are connected, then it's a storage location, interim storage location because of what they are going Right, 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 right. Yeah. I think his question is more like, you know, which is the connection, the linking area between inventory and warehouse management and that is the interim storage area right the interim storage area is where you receive goods you put it there before it's actually put into the warehouse right he was interpreting the question from that point of view I think it's probably my wording was not great there yeah 
Uh, so in question 17, I should probably have said what mechanism is used to, to put the storage location under warehouse management. And the mechanism is to link it to a warehouse number. Is posting goods issue part of inventory management or warehouse management? Inventory management. And therefore the next question is warehouse management. The answer to uh, 19. Execution of transfer order is part of warehouse management. Under what conditions might a stock transfer involve warehouse operations? Yeah, what is that? Under what conditions might it involve stock transfer? Might not, might not involve a warehouse operation. Um, when the stock transport order is for an outstanding purchase order? This is stock transfer. Okay. If the corresponding storage locations are not under warehouse management, they are not under warehouse management. So for there you don't need any warehouse operations. Right? If those corresponding storage locations between which the transfer is taking place are not under warehouse management. Right? So then you'll just say, well, some mechanism is being used to move the stuff. See, warehouse operations are going to occur only if the storage locations involved are under warehouse management. If you have not connected those storage locations to a warehouse, then there is no need for any warehouse operations. Okay. Uh, 21. Your company has received a sales order and has created an outbound delivery for it. In what order will the inventory and warehouse ma operations be performed? Warehouse first and inventory second. Okay, this it, distinction is important. Right here, what you're saying is, you created an outbound delivery document first. Right? And then, you're going to do other operations. So if you're, if you're doing the uh, goods movements against a delivery document, then you do the warehouse operations first. Right? So once again, the slide I'm talking about is... Uh, This one. Okay, we are talking about this slide. So in this slide it says, remember when I spoke about it, I explained inbound delivery. That means you are doing against a delivery document. Right? In fact, the scenario we are talking about is here. For outbound delivery, right? So we have created an outbound delivery document with sales order reference. Right? So we are doing the warehouse operations first and then doing the inventory operation, right? Whereas if your movement is not against a document for other transactions, it's not against a delivery document, then you do inventory first and then you do the warehouse. Okay, same thing on this side also. Okay, if your goods movement is occurring with reference to a delivery document, inbound or outbound, then you do the warehouse operations first. Yes. Otherwise, you do the inventory operations first. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. 22, same thing. Your vendor has given you advance notification, which means you created your delivery document and therefore you do warehouse operations first. Okay. So in both cases, 21 and 22, you'll do the warehouse operations first. And you have created an inbound delivery in anticipation. Okay. Uh, 23. With respect to warehouse management, which of the following statements is valid? A. Multiple storage locations from multiple plants can all be assigned to a single warehouse number. A. 24. Transportation pl planning points are allocated at which organization level? Company, Company code. code level. Okay. It's the same diagram uh, as before. Yeah. Under one conditions, would a goods receipt generate a transfer requirement? Same question. Okay. When this warehouse management is being used for the concerned storage location. And it's going into inventory. It's not for consumption. 
and it's not for consumption right both it's being stored in a storage location which is under warehouse control and it's not for consumption because if it's for consumption then it will go directly to the consuming uh, area 25 yeah then the right option is like when a system detects there is a warehouse number and a system locates there is a combination of plant number and a storage location associated with that material which is under warehouse control yeah because the book says specifically says like it, it will be processed when this uh, combination occurs so right but the only thing is it if this material that you are buying is is not being put in storage at all right then there is no need of any warehouse operation transfer requirement is initiating the warehouse operations so the full answer is if the storage location if the concerned storage location is connected to a warehouse number right that's the scenario of course if we, if it's for consumption there won't be a store storage location at all so then it won't okay if the concerned storage location is under warehouse management then a transfer requirement would be generated okay what three things determine a specific location in a warehouse storage area storage type storage type yeah storage type storage area storage bin storage section section not area storage type storage section and bin okay so we're really talking again about uh, section here storage type storage section bin storage type storage section storage bin If they, yeah, it depends on how they are using the term, right? Okay. Uh, material is kept in dash before being put away in the interior of a warehouse. Interim storage areas. Hierarchical substructure we've already talked about it. Storage type, storage section, and. Uh, you need to include warehouse numbers in part of your substructure. No, warehouse number just identifies the warehouse. We're talking inside the warehouse. So. Okay, just go back to your PowerPoint. If, if that the substructure, the top of it is showing warehouse. Substructure is this, right? Substructure inside the warehouse is this, right? So this is let's say this is the warehouse, and this is the structure inside the warehouse. Uh, what is the relevance of SMU to physical inventory procedures? Each SMU is counted separately. Each SMU is counted separately. And difference Right. Posting of difference and counting both occur at the level of stock management unit. Uh, counting and posting of differences occurs at the level of stock management unit, SMU. Okay. Counting and store and posting of differences occurs here. Twenty-seven is interim storage areas. Okay, thirty. Twenty-nine. Counting and posting of differences occurs at the level of store uh, stock management units. Thirty. Which of the following are used to specify SMU? ADE, ADE, plant and storage location, and uh, stock type and batch. Okay. Thirty-one. BC, posting block and freezing book inventory. Right. Thirty-one is BC. Thirty-two, posting block. Posting block is what prevents good movements, and uh, uh, 33 uh, freeze book freeze book freezing book inventory is the one that uh, prevents the update. Okay, 34. Can I yes 34 yes PI document can be deleted. 
What two things could possibly happen if there is a difference? Recount or posting of differences. Right? You can either recount or you can choose to post the differences. No, but you'll post the difference, right? You can't say, well, I, there, I thought the stock was 50, but I counted 60. You have to post 60 if you believe it. Or you recount it. But what were you saying? What are the four things the book says? I mean, it says, the book says like... Uh, Okay, I was saying like the book says you can either change the entry, uh, you can either post the difference, you can recount, and then you can either delete the whole thing and you can set it as a new document. Right, that is recount. Yeah. You will create a new PI document to recount. I mean, there's, I would say, mention like four process in it. So okay. Specifically. Yeah, what are you saying? Is it delete the disregard it or not? Yeah, disregard, yeah. Oh, disregard is what? Completely delete the yeah, PI document? Delete and do it as a starting of the new process. Which is recounting. Yeah, but they mentioned like a recount. Is okay, there too and let's, let's, let me highlight that and, and research that a little bit. So you're saying that is the equivalent of disregarding the whole thing. Uh, let me count that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I have to research it and see what it is. Okay, what are item tolerance and document tolerance used for? Individual. No, both. Both could be a value. It just it will determine whether the person has the authorization to post that much of difference or not. Right? This is, see, when a person is, when, a, when an individual in the organization is posting differences, they are authorized to post differences only up to a certain extent. Right? For an individual item, you may say they are authorized to post differences up to $100. And for an entire document, up to $1,000. So that's what it does. Okay? It authorizes individual, it checks the authorization of the individual to post that. No, that is the trigger. Not for the tolerance is just whether you're allowed to post or not. Okay, recount is just in terms of differences. Thirty-seven. Which of the following determines the posting period? A. A. Date of first entry count. First count entry. Thirty-eight. Which of the following could be the first step in physical inventory process? B can be creation of PI document or C, entry of count. Right? Yeah. B and C. Entry of count because that will then, uh, you know, pro proact it will create, retrospectively it will create a PI document. Okay, it's possible that that process is there. Which of the following statements are true of cycle counting? Uh, okay, what did I have? One second. Let me look here. Uh, 39. I had AD, let's see. The cycle count indicator determines how many times it will count, that is fine. Okay. Now C is very sneaky option. Not higher unit value. <laughs> you might have a material which is very expensive, but you you're consuming only one of it every year. You don't need to count it that often. That's why I put unit value there. Right? It's higher total value. Okay, so be careful about that. AD. See, this is a typical case where uh, A and D are definitely right. Right? So you should not get tricked. Then carefully examine the others. For sneaky options. C is like depends on you. You want to do it or not. Yeah. Professor, however, in right. some right. sense, right. B and D are similar. That, that's what I was. That's what I was actually arguing. So yeah, B and C are actually similar. B and D, right? yeah, B and D. Because it's actually a, a particular frequency which you're counting. 
No, B says round robin means you just take turns. Every material. No, round robin throughout the year, one after the other. That means you're not saying one material is more important than the other or anything. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is round robin means like you're doing it at a particular, at a particular frequency, like right? every quarter, biannually, monthly. Wikipedia uh, round robin. <laughs> <laughs> does, does round robin mean that? You're coming at a particular frequency, right? Not, not necessarily. See, but one thing, whatever else round robin implies, it implies that everything, all of them are equally important. That's what round robin is, right? What you're counting, what you're counting is an equal importance. Each material. Materials are counted one after the other in round robin fashion. So material A, you'll count this month. B next month. C next month. Say period. Your, your period, Wikipedia period is a month. Right? A this month. B next month. C next month. No matter how important A, B, C, D are. That's what that statement implies, which is wrong. Cycle count goes for the so, so the count is fixed, right? You're basically saying because you're counting the same amount of times each year, yes? No. It's like no, are you counting the same amount of times each year? See, it's some, okay. Right, right. You're counting in the same amount of times each year, right? Counting it meaning what? The material. Not the material. We're talking of thousands of thousands of materials, lots of materials. Right? The materials are counted. Right. Materials are counted one after the other. Right. Meaning material A this month. Right. B next month. C next month. No matter how important the materials are to you. Right? But the philosophy of cycle counting is to count the more important materials more often. Right? Whereas round robin says. So option D is the combination of option B and C. <laughs> D is the exception. Some exceptions are allowed. Right? Oh, you're saying this it's a special case where everything is an exception. Everything is fixed. Right? That, that's possible, but that's not the philosophy of, of round robin. Right? <laughs> no, no. I, Okay, no. If there's any doubt, I think we should discuss it, right? No, I, mean, I, I may be misinterpreting what round round robin means. No, no. See, when you say D is a combination, what you're saying is. See, you could make an exception for every material and say we count it every month, but that's not the spirit of cycle counting. No, no, no. See, you've got some material which is not an important material, right? Meaning, according to your classification, it doesn't become a, a type of material, right? But you say, no matter what, for whatever reason, that particular material, I want to count it every month, even though it's not an A, a material. So the meaning of fix is, does you fix that material being counted? Fix it as a type A material, even though it's not. Uh, Okay, so 40. Which of the following approaches can be used for determining the cycle count indicator? BC. BC. Requirement analysis, consumption analysis. Okay, I don't know if I had this on my slide, but it's in the notes. Right? That is, you can count. Yeah. BC. BC. That is, you can you can count the value of the material in terms of either how much of it we consumed over the year, or how much of it was required over the year okay either from a demand perspective or from a, an actual usage perspective okay what, what makes a wrong what makes a wrong is that these are the two terms that that are in the book you're right you're saying value analysis is what you're doing there when you do either b or c okay? it's just the the names that they've used i agree with you Okay, that's good. That was probably the most contentious session we've had. Right? We've, we've got to have some of these. It's good. With respect to question 35, because it's given on the page number 
Page 360? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let me... It says you can change it, but you cannot delete the document. You can remove the item from the document. Oh, okay. Physical inventory procedures. Oh, this is what you can do with the list of differences with that document. See, there is, there is this document called list of differences that you pull up, right? So here they're saying, what can you do with it? Enter, change, display count, post the difference. No, this is. No, here we are, we are talking about. See, they should have put this list of differences in caps or whatever. You know, they should have highlighted it. Because here you are talking about a specific SAP screen called list of differences. What, are, what is the functionality of that screen? Right? So on that screen you can enter a count or you can change a count. Meaning you entered, you saw on the page 60, you entered it. Then you go back and say, oh I made a mistake, it's not 60, it's 70, so I change it. Right? So that is really, it's showing the functionality of the screen. Right, you can post the difference or you can recount. That's all you can do. Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess we should probably stop here.